I've been playing around with making, just for fun really, um, a copper wire, fairly stiff copper wire based LED tree. And the copper wire is stripped out of household wiring cable, you know, just standard house wiring cable. And the end result, um, it, it's using the copper structure of the tree as the negative and then each LED has an individual wire coming from it down to the base where there's a 220 ohm resistor and it's running off a 5 volt supply and if I turn this off you'll see that it's actually quite nice, it's very three dimensional it's quite pleasing actually um, and as with a lot of these things I, I actually have made the LEDs pluggable so you can plug them in and out uh, and put different colours in if you wish and the fact there's a different resistor for each LED means that you can have as many colours as you want in here. The only downside to this is I think I might have, if I'd made another one of these, I might twist the wire a wee bit more around the body of the tree because um, it's a wee bit sort of loose and floppy looking but having said that it's not too bad. Um, the connections in the end I've actually lightly crimped, not really using much force, just gently pinched the um, Molex style terminals on and then soldered them. I didn't, you can't really crimp a wire this size into these terminals with a standard crimping tool because there's a risk that you might actually damage the tool, although having said that it seems quite robust and it seems to just displace the copper but I'm not going to wreck my tool doing that. Um, it's hence why I just g gently crimped them on lightly and then soldered them um, to make the, a good solid connection. And I've been experimenting with different ways to make these. Um, initially I'd got a long bit of wire, well not a long bit of wire, a modest length of wire, and then set another bit off at an angle and soldered them together. And laterally I thought, well I can get more um, light points from the same branch by just putting this wire across in a sort of like a cross shape and solder it in the middle and that saves the number of solder connections and now I'm thinking I could make it even easier. If I was to take um, this wire, now this middle core is actually a thicker cable. It's 2.5mm cross sectional area I think and these are probably 1.5mm, 1 or 1.5mm, I think it's 1.5. So um, here's a, typically how I've been soldering them together. I've been tinning them uh, in the middle where I'm going to actually solder them. So I've just been putting a wee blob of solder in the middle, I'm just doing it straight in the workbench here, it's, you know, I'm sure it's going to see a lot more of this in the future. And if I do this one here, flow some solder on, and at the opposite end, plus also in the middle. And then, this is where these wires get very hot very quickly, then I reflow both of them together to form a sort of um, a cross. Oh, and I let it actually cool down before actually bumping it. That'll do. Noting that these wires get very hot while you're soldering them because copper is a very good conductor of heat. Now the idea was that I could then just add another bit on here. Let's see how hot this is going to be. And then, oops, that the idea is that once these um, have uh, cooled, then they could be bent round at angles and they'd form the branches in a sort of more of a three-dimensional shape than just being a sort of rigid two-dimensional shape. Actually, I could have bent those ones down, that one up, just for even more variety. Now, let's see if I can hold this before the heat gets across. And I shall solder that onto there. Let that cool completely. If I move it too soon and put pressure on it, like like that, just as I was saying, if I move it too soon, it's just going to, the solder isn't uh, fully set yet. It hasn't fully cooled down. So, yeah, you have to have a bit of patience with high thermal mass joints like this. 
generally saying, generally say, saying, if you look at them, um, you can see that they change texture slightly when they cool down. Um, and you'll, I notice a slight frost go over them. Even with the proper good quality lead based solder, you'll see a slight change of state, a, a slight haze goes over it as it cools down. I think that's it this time. And then you can just shape these branches in whatever way you want. Yeah. Not sure about that. I think maybe I prefer these ones. They're more sort of um, organic. This looks is starting to look a wee bit sort of cheap and tacky. The other ones um, I bent a slight L shape, so it wasn't just a, a small solder point. It was actually coming across the the two bits of copper running in parallel, and the solder would flow between them. But yeah, it's interesting. It's a quite tedious thing actually. I wouldn't recommend trying this with any more than say twelve um, lights initially. I, I only used about nine on this one. Is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8? Just 8? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... No, I did use 9. And yeah, it, it, it was a wee bit sort of footry and time-consuming, but um, but it does look nice, you know. It, oops, wires popped off. It does look uh, nice and it is kind of self-supporting, it is rigid. So um, yeah, interesting project.